In another edition of CSN Interviews today, it is Tyler Gallo alongside Nate Breisinger, and today we have a very special guest with us, one of the most decorated RMU women's basketball players in history, and she's currently playing over in Poland right now, uh, Artemis Spanu. Artemis, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, guys. All right, so let's get right into the questions right away. So starting off in basketball, you know, playing sports growing up in Greece, uh, what made you decide to stick with basketball? Well, actually, I was playing soccer when I was younger, and then there was not a women's team to go to. So I decided to go to basketball, and I actually just fell in love with it from the first moment. So I stuck with it, and, I mean, it was a good decision, apparently. <laughs> Uh, yeah, definitely a good decision. Um, so uh, in Greece, you know, can you tell us a little bit about the competitive p competitiveness of uh, youth basketball, especially playing in FIBA uh, competitions as well? Yeah, well, when I was uh, younger, I would say the Greek league was way better than it is now. I had the opportunity to play against older players, my senior team back then when I was 14, 15 years old. Um, had the opportunity as well to be at the national teams since like I was 13 years old. So that was great you know, um, to grow and watch other players and watch other levels and other countries playing and other people from other countries playing. So, um, I mean, definitely, it definitely helped. Yeah, and how do you think it felt to represent Greece at that level, especially seeing uh, playing against other good countries as well? Oh, it feels great. I mean, every time I represent my country, it's just, uh, it's just an honor. And, uh, you know, I can't even describe the feeling, to be honest. I get goosebumps every time I hear the national anthem. So it's, it's, it's a great honor. Yeah, definitely good to have that uh, hometown feel of playing through these tournaments, uh, especially when you're not at home, per se. So uh, RMU, uh, coming out of high school, sort of uh, the recruiting process from other schools as well as RMU, what was it like, and then what made you decide to attend RMU? Well, um, I remember uh, I was playing at the under-18 that time in, in summer, and then there was a Spanish player playing for RMU that year. She was a sophomore, Vega Gimeno from Spain. We played against each other, like I was talking to her, like wanting to go to college, looking for it. And then Coach Sal, that time, like Coach Sal was the head coach of uh, the women's program. Uh, and they sent me a message. Then one of the other coaches came overseas uh, to talk to me and just sit down and watch some of my games. And they offered me a scholarship and it was an easy decision, you know? Yep, of course, I'm coming. That's awesome. That's awesome to hear. <laughs> so you ta you talked about your recruiting process um, with coming over to, to RMU and to the United States. What was that transition like coming over into a new country and what was the most difficult part about it? Well, I must say, if I'm honest, it was really, really hard. Uh, I was just 17 years old, first time leaving my country, my family, my friends, like have to do everything by myself, laundry, food, uh, going to basketball, like acting like <laughs> an adult for the first time and also the language i mean i wasn't that fluent back then and it was difficult at the beginning to adjust and everything uh but i mean the team helped tutors helped um like coach Sal, coach charlie back then so it took me a couple months to get over the fact that i was away but after that it was all normal like it felt like a family so you talked about that family presence on the team. There were players from all over the world on that roster. Um, what was it like meeting them, and how quickly did you build relationships? Uh, I mean, the fact that a lot of Europeans were on the team, it was it was it made it a little bit easier because you know none of us was fluent in English, so we were all make fun of each other for our English and our accents <laughs> and everything and not understanding and all this stuff. Um, and then like the basketball made it easier because it's different playing American basketball to European basketball, uh, more physical in, in the States, uh, more tactics in Europe. So we just add this together and it just made it easier. And like knowing them and like from the first moment, I, I don't know how, but we just, we were close to each other from the first moment. I think being away from home, it just brought us together, you know, easier. Right, and you know, bringing the team together as well, uh, you were able to have success in your first season, uh, picking up NEC Rookie of the Year. How much did this mean to you, especially in your first season in the United States? And then what do you think fueled your success during that season? Well, I had no idea what that meant when I was there. <laughs> I was just playing basketball and enjoying it and wanting to win. I'm a big competitor and, you know, um, I just went out there and gave my 100% and 
you know, the stats came and the team was helping me to to score, to do everything, like coaches and everybody was helping me for that. So, um, I mean, yeah, like Tyler, I had no idea what that meant, but staying there <laughs> and seeing what this is, I was really proud of, of myself. Just, you know, the work you put in, it just, at the end of the year, it just proves, you know, that you're doing something. Right. Yeah. Good to have a lot of success in the first season, even if you didn't know what it meant. But, um, you know, uh, that's uh, the first couple of seasons you were here. The team uh, made it to the playoffs, but wasn't able to get to the, the dance, per se. Um, was it tough on the team losing the playoffs for the first season or first few seasons? Or do you think it was sort of a process leading up to the big one at the end? It was it was definitely tough. I mean, we are we are competitors. We want to win. We want to be first. Uh, we want to be better than other teams. So. It was definitely difficult, but I think that year, uh, from me, for me and the other freshmen that were that year on the team, just made us wanna uh, be better more and like the next year come stronger and get better and just and just win and prove people that you know RMU um, has the the fame of being top of the NEC and bring that that again and win win a championship. So sticking with those first couple of years of your time at RMU, especially as a freshman and sophomore, you nearly started all of the games uh, that you were that that you played in. Um, what was it like within the roster, the competition, like getting trying to fight for those starting roles? And did you do you think Coach Sal had a lot of trust in you? I believe that Coach Sal had a lot of trust from the beginning, from the first day that I went there. Like they showed that I'm gonna be a big role for the team and and important. Uh, so I took that and tried to transfer it to the whole team, but our practices were competitive. Like I was not sure that I was going to start all, all of my, all of my games. Like I had to come in every day and give a hundred percent and prove that I deserve that spot. So that also made me better mentally and as a player. That's that's great to hear. Um, and then moving forward, you did win NEC player of the year twice. And of course, uh, made to the all league first teams as well. Uh, I know you said you didn't uh, really know what the rookie of the year one meant, but these seasons, uh, what do you th do you think um, there was more that competitiveness uh, on the roster sort of fueled you to have even better seasons during these ones? Um, well, winning the NEC of the year, I knew what that meant, <laughs> and Tyler. <laughs> um, but um, I remember winning the first one. It was after a year that the team didn't didn't make playoffs again, and 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 we were out, and like having. We had a great team, but we were struggling with. Um, I think we had we had a lot of injuries. We were down to like eight or nine people by the end of the season. So it was a tough year for all of us. So um, that year, and then my senior year, like I came in pretty much knowing that we're gonna win the championship. Like I wasn't gonna let these four years pass without me getting a ring. So I was determined the whole year. Like it was in my mind. Um, I was working for it every day, and uh, the freshmen that came in and the sophomores that were there, like they all knew what was happening and why they're here and that we're gonna win. Yeah, and you mentioned the ring. Uh, obviously, you guys did win the ring your senior year. Um, first off, what do you think fueled the success of the team during that season, and then why were they so good and able to win the championship? We were like a fist. We were all together. Um, everybody wanted to win everybody was there to get better like because okay seasons have their up and, uh, up and downs like you go through mental stuff that maybe you know you don't feel so good but the main goal for us was was winning and that's what we were doing the whole year like we had a lot of hard games hard practices tough times with coaches with the team with players but i think the main thing that kept us was that we were together the whole time through our ups and downs yeah, and that season uh, you had the best, one of the best single game performances uh, in school history, 39 points against St. Francis Brooklyn. Um, did you ever pay attention to your point totals during games or like stats, or did you just put your head down and um, just go out there and play and just, what do you think went right for you in that game? Yeah, um, not really. Like um, I would never know my points till like somebody told me after the game. <laughs> what was going through my mind was we need to win. I know a lot of balls were coming to me, like a lot of our plays were for me to get the ball or either create or score. So every opportunity I had, I just wanted to make a basket. So our score goes up and we win the game, like every rebound, every hustle play, 
everything, every tip, every defense, like it just just went hard and the stats came after that. Yeah, and uh, uh, moving forward in that season as well, uh, as the season went along, the fans would start to chant MVP. How great was it to hear that, especially as you were going out there trying to win games? <laughs> Um, it gave me goosebumps. I remember shooting that that free throw, and like the whole section on my right was like MVP, 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 and uh, I just it just felt I don't even know the feeling. Like still, like watching that video, it makes me smile. It makes me be proud for who I became these four years at RMU, like as a person and as a player. It's just a great honor. Yeah, it's awesome to have the uh, the fans rally around you, especially as you guys get into the championship. Um, so moving forward into the NCAA tournament, obviously going in as an underdog, it was going to be tough. Uh, playing against Notre Dame, even with the loss, what was that atmosphere like playing in the first round? I mean, yeah, we knew our chances were little on, on that game. We were playing one of the top teams in the nation that time, great players. But um, competing against these players just makes you – uh, realize that this is your next step. Like, if you want to play pro, this is what you're going to get. Like, these kind of players, this kind of competition, this kind of toughness. So it just showed us what extra we need to do. So, you know, it's – and every one of us sets a goal. And if you want to achieve it, that's where you have to get. Yeah, definitely a, a good atmosphere. And then these are definitely tough teams to play against as you move forward. So, um you mentioned the closest of the team. There was another Greek player on the team during your time here in Anna Nikki Uh What was your relationship like with her, and how did your guys' relationship uh, build as you went along in your career? Well, I didn't really know Anna Nikki before she came. Okay, she was a Greek player, uh, but, you know, being she was four years younger than me, three, four years young, younger than me, so we never crossed our paths anywhere. Only RMU was the first time, like, I actually got to spend time with Anna Nikki. Uh, and she's, she's, I guess this is the same like me. Like she wants to win. She, she was there to win championships. She was there to get her goals and that actually connected us more. And I believe me being there made her the decision to come. And like, I had somebody that I knew I could trust and transfer whatever I knew to her. And it was just, you know, good to have also somebody to speak Greek, you know, they don't understand it. So it was just big Greek. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of those Greek connections, also on campus, there's Professor uh, Dr. Apostolopoulou. Did you ever have any connections with her? And sort of what was it like having another adult on campus that you could relate to and reach out to? Yes, yeah, actually my freshman year. Uh, Dr. A was uh, my sports management professor, uh, which I almost failed, but I managed to pass. <laughs> so, but um I still have connections with Dr. A. Like, Dr. A is married to one of the coaches that was there that year. Like, she came to our games, and that's how she met her husband. Uh, she has two kids now, and, you know, I still see her when she comes to Greece. So, you know, another thing that was really made me happy, like, I connected with somebody that – and also her name is uh, Aramis, which means, like, Aramis is not a, it's not a common name in Greece. So having two Aramis in Pittsburgh – it's you know it's a pretty cool thing so uh <laughs> it just it just connected us more and i had somebody that i could rely on. like she would she would take me and Nikki to church like for dinners and everything so it was somebody that you could if something went wrong you had you 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 could go to that's really cool to hear that connection because tyler and i have both had her so we know what she's like and she's a she's a great per professor she's and a great, great. person yes. but um Sticking with back to the to the RMU team, you still hold several records, categories including points and rebounds. What led to the success throughout those years in your career? And what is it like knowing that those records still stand? Um, I wouldn't believe like, what is seven, eight years that I've graduated. So I, I wouldn't think that would still be there, but having that record it just, it means that I actually did pretty good these four years that I was there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it just shows that you know if you if you enjoy the game and you put and you put work and you put time on it, it just gives you back, and that's what's giving me back. Me being in this list and my name still being there. Now, after your career here at RMU, have you closely followed the team since you've left? Um, I have, yes. I mean, the first couple three years after I left, it was easier because I knew the players and. 
I knew everybody, like players would, would reach out to me sometimes just for advice and just to talk a little bit. Now I don't really know the players. I still, you know, follow them. I don't really watch the games, to be honest, but I still follow them on social media and everything. Uh, but I'm sure, like, Coach Charlie is doing a great job with them and they're still being top of the NEC now. Okay, they changed um, their um, conference, but I'm pretty sure, like, Coach Charlie is doing a good job. Now, with, with sticking with the team and following them a little bit throughout the year, seeing someone like Anna Nikki and then someone as well like Neka Azebo, who have been – you know, really dominant fixtures in the program. What has been like to see their success and sort of climb through the rankings as well? I'm I'm really happy for them. Like uh, I know um, Ananiki plays in Greece uh, and Azima plays in in Spain. I think right now, like it's it's pretty cool to follow your dream. Like you you play basketball because you love it, and being able to receive some money from it and consider it as, as your job as thing is a great honor and them following the dream and doing that which is not easy like the mental part and everything you go through your body and everything is, is not easy so whoever goes through that i'm i'm proud of them and for them too that i know them especially even more so then following your your career at rmu you also had the opportunity to attend the washington mystics of the wnba uh training camp what was that experience like it was it was a great experience, like different level from what I was used to in college. Uh, but uh, I saw the level, I saw where, you know, um, where I need to be so I can, you know, achieve that goal. Um, it was it was a great it was a great experience. Like I would never take it back, and uh, always, you know, reaching and that's a goal also. Like you know, getting better every day to get to there again. Now, continuing this this time after RMU, you then had gone back home playing Greece. What was it like to play once again for your country throughout the years, especially after our, playing at RMU? It's been it's been it's been great. Like I mean, this this last few years, my country we had a lot of success. Like in the European Championships, we were able to go to the World Championship, which for Greece and such a small country, it's not it's not easy. Like uh, it doesn't happen very often for us. But now we are in a transition mode where you know. Everything I've learned from these players and whatever I learned at RMU about leadership and, you know, goals and everything, now I can apply to this senior team. And I'm 28 and I'm one of the oldest players right now on my national team. So it definitely helps having been through all these experiences and um, giving them to the young ones. Right, and you're playing in Poland now. Um, what is what has this uh, so far been like for you, uh, going into a different country from Greece and the United States as well? What has this uh, whole thing been like for you? It's been great. I mean, since I left college, I haven't played for Greece, like in in Greece at all. Like I've been in different countries, and Poland. It's my third season in Poland, and I love it. I love the people. I, I love the culture. I love the league here. Um, they know me here, and right now I'm playing at the top team of uh, of Poland. So what is a better thing for a player, like playing for the top team at, at at a country, winning championships and cups and, you know, be happy. And Gdynia is like, I'm in Poland in Gdynia and it's a great city as well. So what else can I ask for? <laughs> <laughs> and what are your expectations for, for the remainder of the season, especially, you know, adjusting to coronavirus and stuff like that? Well, it's tough. Um, like my team went through Corona as well, like a couple months ago. Uh, it's not easy. But we are players and the thing we do is we know how to adjust to everything. So we're adjusting to this situation as well. And as long as we can play, uh, it's a blessing for us. And whatever we can get, we get. Like right now, we just finished our regular season. We're going to playoffs and our cup. So we keep going for our goals, win it, and see how it goes. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned the tournaments, obviously, the national ones in Eurobasket and stuff like that. Uh, what has been just the most gratifying part about taking taking place in these and playing in them as you've gotten older? It's it's a great honor. And being on them, it's, it's not easy to get to them, first of all, because three years ago we didn't make it, and it was devastating, to be honest. Uh, but making them and being there and playing for your country, it's just like something we all want. And we actually just like a, a month ago, we just made it to the next Eurobasket. So it was, it was, it was a great feeling and having, having success in this level is also, you know, um, 
amazing. Like that's what you want. Like being a player, you want to compete in the best level. So um, that's what we're doing right now. Right, and you mentioned a little bit uh, for the playoffs and stuff like that. What are you most looking forward to for the for the rest of the season? Definitely winning and playing with this group of people. I've been in a team that um, we are we are great with each other. We play good basketball. Uh, we actually like each other, which you can't <laughs> find in women's basketball. Uh, but no, I mean, uh, look, looking forward to um, uh, playing these hard games because hard games are coming to the end now. And um, you know, being being top of the league and getting our bonuses as well. <laughs> Awesome. That's that's great to hear. So, well, if we're getting towards the end here, but if there's anything you'd want to plug or shout out right now, now's your chance to do so. I mean, Gore and you, like, I will never forget that. It was a great experience being there, and uh, I would never, like, if I could go back, I would definitely go back to it and and be back and do everything from the beginning. Like, I loved it, and I'm I'm really happy. Like, you guys, you know, you are there eight years after I graduated, and you still remember me. So, this for me, it's 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 a great honor. Yeah, well, we certainly appreciate you uh, sitting down with us today. Uh, for once again, for CSN interviews, it's been Tyler Gallo and Nate Bresner with Artemis Spinu, former women's basketball player. Artemis, thanks so much once again for sitting down with us. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it.